This is George with BrunswickGreen.com. We're here with Chuck Parks, a uh, resident of Brunswick County for how long, Chuck? Uh, we bought the house in 2002, and I retired and moved down here in June of 2004. 2004, so quite some time. Um, and uh, I'm a neighbor of Chuck's, and one thing that fascinates me about Chuck is uh, I classify him as a master gardener. Um, and to give him an example here, we're going to show you why I say that. What you're looking at right now is broccoli that I started uh, middle of February. So you can see that nice huge broccoli a little bit more than a month later. And now we're looking at Chuck's broccoli. Uh, and when did you start this broccoli, Chuck? Uh, from seed or from when I transplanted it? When you transplanted it? I transplanted it uh, the 9th of March. And it so was when do you think it started by seed? About two weeks prior? About three weeks prior. And so, when I transplanted it, it was basically the size of your broccoli now. Right, yeah. I, I remember I remember asking you, I said, I, I actually told him, I said, my broccoli, uh, I said, I started my broccoli, and Chuck said, well, I wish I'd have been here two weeks ago because he's on vacation. And uh, anyways, both, uh, both, both broccoli were started from seed at about the exact same time, and what you're looking at now is Chuck's broccoli and my broccoli. So, um, Chuck, what a, the reason we're doing this video is because uh, I've Googled my heart out, uh, you know, trying to find any information I could about gardening in Brunswick County. And, of course, uh, North Carolina State has a wonderful resource, uh, but it's broad-viewed. It's not, it's not um, honed in for this particular area. It doesn't zero into this. Yeah, yeah. So, so there was a couple of topics I was going to talk to you about because um, I'm fascinated by what you do. and. Uh, realizing I never listened to you, at least for the past four years, but I am this year. Um, and so there's really five subjects that I wanted to talk about. And the first being is that when you first moved here and you looked at your soil, because I'm sure you've been gardening for quite some time, what, what, what was the soil quality like? Uh, that area out there where the garden is now, George, was just a mass of white sand and sand spurs and weeds. <laughs> that's, that's all it was. Basically, this whole yard was the same thing. It so, was sand spurs and weeds and white sand. Wow. Wow. And so now I know you mentioned to me that uh, that you actually told me um, the first and foremost thing you did was getting a soil sample. I, I got soil samples. I took soil samples and uh, sent them off to the extension service up there. And, and it came back and it basically told me that my soil was suitable for growing sand spurs and wheat <laughs> <laughs> and it, it said what it needed okay and and uh, so uh, the first thing I did was I got in touch with a man down the road that had horses and I had a load uh, a big dump truck load of horse manure delivered that sounds promising well, yes, it is promising. It'll enrich your soil, but it'll also grow the nicest hay field you've ever seen <laughs> in your life. And so it's taken me a while so that now I don't have that all coming up. And the manure, it was the basis that I first started with. Okay. To get a quantity of something in there and then tilling it, basically. Tilling it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, um, so. So, and this soil sample you're talking about, that's provided by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture, and what do they charge for that? Well, nothing. It's nothing. free? It's free. Uh, you can, uh, some of your garden centers around here will have the test kits, and you take your samples and bring it back to them, they send it off. Okay. And then, naturally, when they come back, it comes back, and you, you read it, then hopefully you will go to that garden center to get whatever is needed to enrich your soil. But okay. you can take it up to uh, Bolivia, to the uh, to the garden, master gardens up there, and, and they will send it off. And, and now how long did that take for you to get your results Ooh, back? Uh, depending upon when you take it, if you take it like right, right now during growing season, uh -huh. you know, they get backlogged because everybody's saying, what do I have to do? Okay. But if you, you know, take it when it's not the big growing season, uh, I'm going to say 
10 days, maybe. That's good. That's yeah, good. I mean, and this, and this is a free service. Free service. So, so basically, you just have to get a postage stamp, correct? They, that's it. They, okay. You get the. They even they give you the packet and they give you the little things to put your soil into. You mark different locations where you took it from, and then it comes back, and uh, they give you the analysis like. Uh, where you took sample A from, that needs this. Where you took sample B from, that needs that. So, I mean, you could do your garden, your lawn, you could and just mark each sample differently uh -huh. and keep track of where you took those samples from and they will come back and tell you what your soil needs for enrichment. Now, now do you do you remember what the what the major um, nutrient that you were lacking was? Because, you know, it's pretty much... I'm going to say, basically, uh, we were it was real low on nitrogen because uh, sand doesn't have much nitrogen in it. So, uh, right away, my wife, who is the master gardener, uh, was saying, okay, we got to start composting. And so that's what we started doing was composting. And building it building, up. So building after that, that up. yeah, after that manure, that initial manure, uh, everything is has been nothing but from our yard, okay, or the house. Now, um, you know, we talked about this, I believe, last uh, last growing season. But I noticed you were cutting a couple of neighbors' yards in the neighborhood, and and I was like, well, wow, Chuck, is that a little side job? And you said, no. You said I'm doing it for the grass clippings, and uh, <laughs> and what we're looking at right now is you're looking at a. You're looking at um, a pile of leaves that, yep. uh, and, and how long have these leaves been here that we're looking at? All right, that that pile right there, uh -huh. uh, I started last last year about this time when, when I start going around getting all the leaves off of the yard, you know, and everything, and I start piling them, and then I do what my wife calls lasagna. Uh, it's like make a pile of leaves, and then after that, you put grass clippings, all the green stuff on it. Okay. And then another layer of leaves, and then more grass clippings. And that pile there, uh, I would say by in s about September, I guess, it started from nothing. And in September, that, that pile there was at least, what, four and a half foot tall, going down through there, and you can see what it is now. It's, what? That's not even foot a foot and a half. Foot and a half, yeah. maybe at the most. Now this other pile you have over here, we're looking at right now, um, and I'll put my hand in there and sort of fiddle through it because you showed me this the other day. That yeah. good. I mean, that looks like Miracle Grow. You get at Home Depot. Okay, um, now at the bottom there, the closest pile right there by the birdhouse. Uh huh. Okay, that's a two-year-old pile. Okay. And so that will get planted in this year. Okay. I have a weird thing about I plant in my. Right in the compost pile. In the compost pile. That's interesting. Now, the far pile over there, and those those bags. Uh huh. Okay, those are this year's leaves. Gotcha. And what I do with them is now I will go and I will lay newspapers between all my rows. Uh huh. And then I put about four inches of leaves of this year's leaves over the top of the newspapers. Okay. And then at the end of the growing season. Uh, the newspapers have rotted down and everything, and the leaves, and I just rototill them. When I'm finished with the garden, I go through and I just rototill everything into the ground. So, so the two-year pile that you know at the bottom there that we just saw that, that has the real rich-looking soil contents mm -hmm. it, it, is that. Do you do you till that into your garden, or do you use that for flower beds? Or uh, well, what I like to do is I'll flatten that out. Okay. And then I'll I'll dig out a say an 18-inch circumference uh -huh. and uh, I will plant vine crops in there that's that's where I plant my winter squash okay and, and I put that right into that and so the roots just go right on down into what you dug into that good black right stuff. right they go right down into that and the uh, the leaves keep the weeds out and plus uh, they hold the moisture and stuff like that and so that's what will go in there now the, the small this one over here, uh -huh. okay, that's where the tomatoes are going to go, along that line, and I will do the same thing with them. Then at the end of this year, that pile will be gone. That's going into the garden. Okay, you, you'll, you'll, you'll actually rototill that in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, because that'll be rotted down 